All right, in this lesson, we're gonna look at the statement of retained earnings. If you're kind of getting the gist here uh, with our examples, we started with the income statement, and now we're going to the statement of retained earnings. So although we didn't really talk much about the retained earnings here in this lesson, it's just kind of good to, to rehash what that looks like so that as we start getting to the point where you're actually doing a full financial statement accounting cycle problem, you actually understand all of the components really well because you've seen it so many different times. So let's take a look at it. Again, this is a kind of an easy one because I've given you a lot of parameters here, but you really should understand how the makeup of this actually works. So what do we already know? So in our example, we already know that this is our unadjusted trial balance balance from section three. Uh, we've got all of our assets, liabilities, equity. We have our revenues and expenses on this statement. Now we don't have any dividends this period um, just because we haven't really talked about dividends, but there's no dividends here. Uh, so we won't have to worry about that. Now we also know that the income statement that we just prepared in the last lesson is here. This is going to be necessary in order to actually complete the statement of retained earnings because we need the net income to prepare that statement of retained earnings. So that's why we do the income statement first and then this statement second. Okay. So with that, here's our statement of retained earnings. Now, again, I caution you because you know, right now I'm making it easy. I'm giving you kind of all the bullet points. You're just filling in the blanks. But at the end of the day, you kind of need to know how this thing is prepared. So notice at the very top, we got the who, the what, and the when. Who is this for? Walnut Creek Inc. What is this statement of retained earnings? And then for what period? This is for the period ending April, uh, April 3rd. It should say April 30th. It says April 3rd. I am press zero. What are you going to do? Okay. So just know it's for April 30th. I'll put a zero there just, well, now it looks like I just circled the comma like I made a mistake. So 30th, okay? So April 30th, 2021. So how do we do the statement of retained earnings? So on the statement of retained earnings, we start with the beginning balance of the retained earnings. We'll add net income. We'll subtract any dividends paid that will give us the amount left for retained earnings. The way that I like to look at this is I like to think about, you know, the company made money, right? So they made $7,775. They have two options to do with that cash or that money, that profit. Uh, they can either distribute it to the shareholders in the form of a dividend. That's why we subtract dividends. Or they can retain it and use that to improve their business, reinvest in their business, do something in their business. And so they can keep it. And so that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to reconcile. What do they do with that profit? Do they distribute it or do they keep it? And if they kept it, Let's add it to what they've already kept so we can keep a running total of how much they've kept of the profits in order to reinvest in the company, okay? So with that, let's start with our retained earnings beginning balance. Now, if we go back to the trial balance here, notice that I don't even have a retained earnings account. So if I don't have a retained earnings account, the assumption is I can use zero as the beginning balance. Now, if there is a retained earnings balance, you would use that number as a starting point. In this case, we don't, so we're just gonna go ahead and go forward here. Retain earnings, zero at the beginning. Then we're gonna add net income. So we did calculate net income in the last lesson. In the last lesson, we calculated net income at $7,775. Therefore, that's the amount we're going to add to our retained earnings. Now again, we're gonna go back to the trial balance and see, do we have a dividend? There is no dividend and the problem itself didn't tell us that there was a dividend because sometimes the problem might tell us and then not put it on here, which shouldn't happen, but it could. Uh, in this case, nothing here. So we're going to have subtract zero. So now we can do the mathematics here. Zero plus 7,775 plus minus zero equals $7,775. So the retained earnings at the end of the period was $7,775. What can we gather from this? Well, we know that the company made $7,775 and did not distribute anything to their shareholders. Therefore, they kept it in order to reinvest in the business. Now, if they're just starting, that makes total sense. We want them to re reinvest in their business. That way they... Um, don't become stale and that luster of them being a business goes away, kind of like um, somewhat Kodak. Kodak didn't want to go into the digital uh, photography space. They wanted, they were a film uh, processor and they kept with the, that morals, 
But the problem was there was companies that were coming up with this digital media picture type of thing where they would create cameras that took pictures digitally rather than using film. And because Kodak was so late in the process and didn't follow that trend, Kodak is no longer like a camera company per se. They're more like a, a chemicals company. Uh, so uh, they've lost out because they lost out their luster as Kodak being this you know big brand because they didn't follow the trend. They didn't invest in what they were doing. So that's what we have. Uh, that that's why we want to reinvest in our companies and make them innovative and create new products and uh, build upon that blah 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 all right so that is our example here on preparing the statement of retained earnings i hope you enjoyed this walkthrough of an example and we'll see you in the final one where we will be doing the balance sheet until then we'll see you in the next video Hey guys, it is Patrick. Don't forget to press the like button and share this video with someone who could get a lot of use from watching this lesson, like maybe a classmate or maybe a friend or maybe just a parent just because you wanted to share this video because you're very excited about what you saw. Share it with someone. And if you want to help us grow and help us make sure that we put the very best in accounting topics out on YouTube, make sure you press the subscribe button and turn on that notification bell. That way you're alerted every time we post videos to this channel. Now, I do this with every one of my classes at the end of class. What did you learn from this lesson? Put that in the comment section below and I'll respond to you on what you got out of this video. So hope you enjoyed this video and we will see you in the next lesson.